Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome to Follow a Sketch, February day three. And today I am using this sketch that I found online and apparently it's from sketchsupport.com. So I have this two photo sketch. I have two photos here. And uh, after these two photos, once I scrapbook this photo, I am going to be finished with Christmas 2016. So that is super excited. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch another Christmas layout since this is the third day of Christmas layouts. Tomorrow, something new. Promise. All right, let's see what I can do. So here I am. I'm using those papers from the paper pad and I've trimmed down this glitter red and creamy white striped paper so that it has areas on three sides so that you'll be able to see that border of the black paper on three sides because I believe that is the way the sketch is. Now my sketch was printed out on my regular printer and as you can see it needs some ink because I printed it in black and it came out blue. <laughs> it makes me think of those old um, ditto machines when I was in elementary school, we had dittos, um, D-I-T-T-O, where, I mean, basically it was a copier, but they were called dittos, and they were printed in this bluey, purpley ink. Uh, does anybody remember those? I, anyway, flashback. So I pulled some dark green cardstock out and I just chose to use that to map my photos just because I wanted a border around the photos. Um, sometimes I switch it up where I don't have a border around my photos and sometimes I really just like the border around my photos. And I think this time I did because of the pattern paper in the background was kind of busy and I felt like I needed something to break it up. Now, wow, I used a lot of adhesive. Oh, oh, oh. So the reason why I use so much adhesive, because I normally don't use that much when I'm using my ATG, because I find that it's really strong and I only need a small amount. The reason why I did that was because of the glitter on the, that red stripe is glitter. And I always seem to have a problem with adhesive sticking on glitter. It just doesn't want to stay. But that is that is the reason why I add it so much. Normally I don't. I notice that I, because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I judge people with the amount of adhesive that they use when I'm watching videos. Sometimes I'm like, girl, what are you doing? And and I just see people use their ATGs and cover from left to right, like the entire, the entire back of their paper. And I'm thinking, holy moly, the apocalypse will happen and end of days. And this scrapbook layout is going to stay together because that girl has oodles and oodles of adhesive on her layout. So you know what? Yes, I might be judging you, but more power to you because your I can't see your layouts falling apart. Now my layouts don't fall apart. Anytime that I've pulled a layout, a book out or looked at it and some things have come loose, it's one of two reasons. One is because it is adhesive that I had used way back in the beginning when I started scrapbooking. And when I started scrapbooking, I used some very cheap photo squares and a glue stick. And as you'll know, glue sticks don't hold up a tremendous amount. So they've fallen out or it's been like a thicker or a sticker that I didn't add extra adhesive to and they pop off. So that's always disappointing. Now what I decided to do was pull out this Chamel Christmas Magic um, Christmas tree paper. I love this tree paper. I love Christmas trees. So, I mean, I just really do. The Christmas trees are my jam. <laughs> 
Like I just really enjoy them. So I decided to place this down here. And what I did is take the little bit of striped paper that I'd cut off at the edge. And I decided to trim it down so that the cream was even on both sides and just use it as a top border along the Christmas trees. And I'm not putting it completely behind the photo. I'm just tucking it under just a little bit. And while I was talking about randomness, <laughs> I added that plaid border sticker from one of my Christmas sticker sheets. And I gotta say, I am super excited because I am finally getting to the end of some sticker st sheets in my stash. So these two, I think there's two Christmas ones that I'm almost to the end to. And I finished one of my Echo Park ones earlier. And let's see, I believe there's, there's another Echo Park one or two that are getting close to the end. And that's always, ex always, always exciting to me, especially the 12 by 12 sticker sheets. I always feel super accomplished. When I finish one of the little like four by six sticker sheets or even a six by 12, I'm like, yeah, that's good job, Sandy. But man, I finish a 12 by 12 and I am strutting. <laughs> okay. So I pulled off this puffy sticker and it says Christmas. I was thinking about adding more to the title, but I'm just leaving it as Christmas. I mean, your titles don't have to be super exciting all the time, right? I'm sometimes you're just saying what it is. Now, I felt like I needed to put Christmas on it because um, this is my husband sitting in the love sack and there isn't, I mean, the Christmas village is in the background on the low bookshelf. So there are Christmas things in the background, but if you were just flipping through my album and this wasn't with Christmas papers and it wasn't in with the Christmas section, which is the chronological section of the album where it's December, you might not even realize that this was at Christmas. You might just think, oh... He got an airplane thing. And, you know, I want this to be, because it's Christmas. So I'm thinking about adding these wood veneer trees to the embellishment areas. And I trim off the stump, or the stump, the trunk of the tree because it was a little bit long with where I wanted it. And I have these down here like this. I have these three wood veneer trees and I'm not loving it. Um, I'm thinking that I need to change it up somehow that there's not enough excitement going on. And it's just not, it's just not screaming yes to me because I really like the pattern papers together. I really like this poinsettia floral with the glitter stripe and I'm happy with that and I'm excited for the way it looks, but I'm not loving just the wood veneer. It's kind of not amazing, really. But I do decide to pull out my die cuts and I had packed up my Christmas stuff. I normally keep die cuts and four by six photo boxes, like the individual ones, but I had moved it into one of these freckled fawn uh, plastic zip pouches for easier storage because I do put away my Christmas stuff. I keep my Christmas stuff separate. And it just made, it. it's more room in the zipper pouches. So I just used a tag here and then I am um, tying this twine into a bow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my Zots and I'm gonna pop that down right on the tag. And I like how this turned out. I really liked this flare badge that I added as well. I felt like it added a little bit of fun and it brought kind of that darker color down. Again, even though it is on some dark green cardstock, it brought it down some more to that bottom area. And I pull out the sketch because I haven't looked at it in a little bit. And I just want it to see where that embellishment cluster was on the right hand side 
and I didn't feel like it could go up on the top like it was in the sketch because the trees would be sitting on top of other trees and that looked kind of funky. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I recorded that first part of my voiceover. Uh, my husband and son had come back home and I decided that I needed to stop doing what I was doing and hang out with them. Uh, my son has now shipped out for his duty station. So in case you're wondering, that's why there haven't been videos or updates to my channel. He was here for two weeks before he shipped and we spent as much time together as a family. So back to the Christmas layout over here. What I had done was take this little, I'm not exactly sure what I was doing there. Oh, I was warming, my hand was freezing and I was using my heat gun to warm my hand. Now I was careful not to burn myself. So don't be stupid like that and use your heat gun to warm yourself up. Don't catch anything on fire or burn yourself. So I embossed this tree. I wanted to give it a little bit of more texture than just the plain old die cut shape. And I went ahead and layered up this little wood veneer tree here. And they are not sitting on top of the other trees, so that makes me ridiculously happy. And there we go, get them down. Now I absolutely adore Christmas trees and I adore them even more. Um, in my Christmas albums. At first I thought I was going to tie a bow and stick it in that little hole on the top of that Christmas tree, but I decided to add a glittery star and just went ahead and added a few little star bits around the trees as well. I decided to take that one off right there because I wasn't really feeling it. Like there was too much there was just too much wood veneer and it wasn't as exciting as I wanted it to be up there. So, you know, you mess around and figure out what works for you and what you like and, you know, and what sounds good. I thought about bringing in another one of those flare badges because of the black flare badge in the bottom little Christmas tree cluster, but that really wasn't working for me either. And at this point, I'm just... I'm going through my Christmas bits and I'm trying to see what I can layer with this Christmas tree over here. I like the way it nestles, like it fits really nicely where that T and that S kind of connect, but it really just wasn't making me happy. What I liked about this puffy sticker here was the height. I liked that it brought some fun and excitement a little bit further up on the page and it wasn't just right there um, across this vertical strip. I decided to go ahead and layer this puffy sticker on top of a tag. However, I felt like the tree trunk was just a little bit too long so I went ahead and cut off the tree trunk a little bit. Now I'm just trying to figure out where exactly I want to position this tree and this tag so that it nestles within the letters of Christmas and it also overlaps the photo without overlapping anything too important. So that's what I came up with and I went ahead and grabbed that Lawn Fawn Twine again. I love this Lawn Fawn Twine. It's kind of like it's it has a bit of a waxy kind of texture almost like it's starched a little bit so it's not just normal Baker's twine, or maybe that's all in my imagination and it's just that it's thicker, who knows. So I went ahead and tied a little bow and used my glue dots, or my zots rather, to place it right up there. And here I'm just arranging it a little bit. It didn't exactly tie where I wanted it to, so I would need it to just update that a little. And that is pretty much gonna do it for this layout. And you'll be able to see the sketch that I used and how close I stuck to the sketch. And this is going in my album and it is going to be finished. So there it is. Last Christmas layout for Follow a Sketch February. I promise you. Go ahead and um, 
hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of the Follow a Sketch February layouts. And while I am splattering on some Heidi Swap gold... Oh, my mind just blanked. What is this? Color shine. Oh, goodness, guys. All right, go ahead, subscribe so you don't miss any, and I will catch you guys tomorrow.